Oh. Let me just control this. Haha, <laughs> it looks better. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see um, you know, how many people will um, log in. Ah. Ah. Good evening, welcome my brothers and sisters. My name is Father Tamin. I'm the vicar of uh, the parish of St. Um, George, Enfield. <laughs> this is our um, thought for the night. Um, good evening, Judith and Susan, Angela, Mustafa, good evening, Mustafa, um, Ronnie. Um, how are you all? Oh gosh, oh, I've been struggling um, last couple of days. Um, I just had a really kind of, you know, bad, um, a bad bag. Good evening, Jane, Sharon, welcome. So I've been struggling with, with this, you know, dodgy bag. <laughs> I, I feel much better, but still, mm, like that. But it's okay, um, well, I'll be fine. Uh, good evening, Pauline. Um, welcome, well, welcome um, to you all. Um, I, I was here in this church, um, not 10 o'clock, slightly earlier, um, yesterday. Good evening, Carol. Welcome. <laughs> um, um, yesterday, of course, you know, it was um, a Sunday, um, Sunday evening. Um, some of you will know that um, in our parish school, we do the collective worship um, on Monday morning, we do the Vicar's Value, Vicar's Value, um, I can't remember the exact name, but let's say collective worship, and, and that's what I do. Um, and since, um, since this term, um, I had to do something, I've got something to do in, in the mon well, on Mondays, um, on Monday morning. So um, I, it's, it's quite hard for me physically, um, but difficult for me to go to the school and then lead the, um, um, the school assembly, um, collective worship, um, you know, with everybody. And then at the same time, because of the um, you know, corona, you know, the virus, um, it is not allowed for us to bring everybody, all the classes, all six, you know, um, the classes into uh, the school hall anyway. So the way actually we do, let me just, just turn it around. The way actually we do, we, we're using technology. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is happening in um, Mrs. Sheehan's office. Good evening, Hannah. Welcome, welcome. Um, so what I do is, um, well, not only me, but you know, sometimes you know, Mrs. Sheehan um, does her you know, school assembly. And in that case, technically speaking, what they do is doing a video conference. So Mrs. Sheehan already set, um, <laughs> has her own altar. And then in front of that altar, there is a candle, there is a you know, altar cover, and then there is a laptop with um, the small video cam. And then she is actually doing, she invites every single class, all the class, um, you know, um, classes, to join in that video meeting. And on that video meeting is a big blue button. It's called a big blue button. I quite like that name. And then if you go there, once you log in, you can see the class, each classroom, because they have a camera installed in front of them. So I can see them, well, I can see, see all of them, not as an individual, but as a collective, you know, the classroom. And they can see me. I think that is a brilliant. And then last, last fr Friday, that was my first time to go to, um, to the school. And then actually um, doing the school elect, um, special service, that was in a harvest um, you know, service. Um, you know, do it um, by myself using that technology. I was really impressed. You know, that is a really good. And then um, I didn't actually have a chance to actually talk to them. Well, it was only me talking to them. I wasn't able to actually listen to them, but they can do it because it's basically it's like a Zoom. So last night, um, but I, well, well, today, I couldn't do that, so I had to record something. And sometimes I just record, um, you know, good evening, Paulina, welcome. <laughs> sometimes I do, um, I, well, I record my video 
or here in my room or even somewhere. But last night I decided to come here in this church and then I was telling them a story of Elijah. And then t before I actually um, say anything, I showed them what we've collected together. You know, the um, harvest, you know, the gift. Um, North London Food Banker will come to us on, um, on Wednesday. Good evening, Pamela. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. Um, they will come to us to collect them on Wednesday. I think it's just Wednesday morning. But as you know, we have Mass at 12 o'clock, so they may come before Mass or even after Mass. So we, we don't know what exactly, um, what time they're going to come. But Wednesday, um, they're going to come and they're going to collect all the items that we donated together. Because, you know, mind you, it is not only the church members. Good evening, Emma. <laughs> Welcome. It is not necessarily, um, you know, the church donations. It is our parish donations. So um, our school joined in and all our members of this, you know, the congregation parish you know they also brought some gift so everything will will um will be collected on wednesday so it's still there i wanted to show how we look like to our children your wonderful donation here now this is the outcome this is reserved so um i said big thank you to um each and every one of them on behalf of all of you so i delivered our you know gratitude thank you message to our children so that was the part one and then the second part was um, I was talking the story of Elijah you know Elijah trying to um, you know meet the Lord yeah and then as we know um, there was a voice um, well they'll come out of it because the Lord will you know um, passing there so you should come out and then you have to actually um, see the Lord so the Elijah came out, and then, well, the rest of the story, that's the story that, that we know. Good evening, Jenny. Um, Jenny's welcome. <laughs> yeah. So um, Elijah came out of, um, you know, where he was before, probably in a cage or what, not cage, you know, a cave, um, somewhere in the wilderness. And then there was a strong wind, extremely strong wind. How strong was it? was kind of typhoon. I know I think it was more than typhoon because the Bible suggested that. I think it's the first king. It says, even that wind breaks the rocks. Yeah. So can you imagine the strong wind to break the rocks or the pebbles? You know? It must be awfully strong and then terrifying in you know, the wind. But after that, Elijah realized that there was no God in there. And after what happened? Yes, of course. I'm not dancing. Mimic earthquake. There is earthquake there. And he must be terrified. Earthquake, can you imagine earthquake? Wow, am I dying or am I going to survive? After that, there was no God in there. And what comes next? It's like a quiz. Anyone? Who knows what comes on the third? <laughs> well, just just Type it, type it if you know. What was the third one? Well, I know the answer. I know the answer. I can guarantee that I have no memos or anything because of what that's what I... <laughs> Good evening, Alex. Welcome. We're just doing a small quiz now. Um, yes, but, you know, for those who know the answer, just to type it, but I'll give you the answer now. Anyway, um, the third one, the third one was a fire. Can you imagine that? A fire in front of... Elijah's eyesight, the enormous, you know, the, you know, the fire, but not like Moses, because when Moses saw, I, this is quite interesting. I really liked it. When we're talking about the same fire, but for Moses, there was a, there was a spirit of God in the, in the fire, because the bushes was burning, but was not consumed, and then that was how the Moses was intrigued to see that, but. For the Elijah, there's a big fire in front of him. Wow, it's too hot, too hot. But there is no God in the fire either. So, after that, what comes next? Good evening, Madeline. Welcome, welcome. There is a quietness. But actually, the Bible says there is a voice, a thin and quiet voice. So I assume that that was a kind of, you know, a peaceful moment. After the strong wind, earthquake, and then a fire, after that, there was no God in them. 
But God was showing his existence in the silence. And then there was a voice, you know, Elijah, what, why, what, what are you doing here? You know, but, but that conversation is, is not what I wanted to share anyway. So I stopped there. And I just told them um, in my recording, <laughs> collective worship, well, sometimes it's really important for us to, um, yes, in the amount of silence, but it's important for us to keep quietness. And how many times do we say, now let us keep some quietness and then let us offer our prayers or something like that. How many times do you hear I say, or the, myself, or Father Vince, or other churches, you know, other ministers, priests, you name it. How many times we as a ministers encourage people to have a moment of quietness, to bring, to, to help them ready to offer prayers or help them to go into the worshipful um, you know, status. I think it's enormously important for us to have that moment in our own lives. I know if you can actually manage to go to a, you know, a retreat, for example, I prefer, I prefer silence retreats than just normal retreats. Because for me, um, switching off everything from everything and I just don't say a word, that is the best way for me to recharge my spirituality, as it were. I mean, the more I talk, it's, it's, it's less I enjoy in terms of my retreat style. Um, fishing, for example. <laughs> you know I love fishing. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, last week I was successful. <laughs> but fishing, I don't talk to other anglers much. I, I prefer to be there and just not just switched off, not thinking about anything. And then that was, is, is, is a healing for me. But some of you may feel, oh, that's a bit boring. I love to actually have a conversation with others, and then that is helpful for me to regain the energy. And that's absolutely fine. And then, is it why monks are silent? Yes, I think so, Hannah. Because even that keeping silence, I think um, it's not only for the, for the Christians. I think if you see um, the monks or the Buddhist monks, for example, they use... Anyone who does uh, the meditation, form of meditation, the concept of meditation and, and having, keeping some silence in, in, in a way in their own lives, I think that works, works well. So anyway, um, that was the message. So dear my children, you know, they, don't forget that, you know, after that silence, and then, you know, the Elijah could actually meet the, you know, meet, meet the Lord, and etc. So shall we actually be, try to be a very sort of, you know, um, you know, um, quiet for 10 seconds. And then I even didn't actually count the 10 seconds with my mouth. I used my hands. So shall we begin 10 seconds yet? Yes, I know you can do it. Yes, some the Ready? Ready? Okay. Mm, I'm, I'm just a fast forward. Mm, now, 10 seconds. Now, I'm going to invite all of you to join me in saying the prayers. It's something like that. So I think uh, that was... Um, you know, interesting reminder to me how important it is for us to keep some silence as well. And whenever I come to the church, I think this is probably only one place that I can find that silence. Even tonight, well, you can see that's a back. If I turn around, that's a church. What do you expect if you're coming to the church in this time? <laughs> Silence. Well, actually, <laughs> normally this is very quiet, but um, not today, because um, outside of our church now, if you see the in barrier and out barrier, people installed, the council installed um, the new traffic lights. So, um, because if there is a cars or any sort of motorcycles, you know, any vehicles driving really fast. And then if they realize that the suddenly um, traffic light changed, they have to stop. And then if the surface, um, if the road is very shiny and then, you know, slippery, they can't really stop it, um, you know, within short range. So they are now actually putting some special surface materials uh, in front of that traffic light. So uh, our barrier at the moment, 
Um, you can't go out, you have to go out the other way around because they're actually working. So workmen there, so they're doing some you know, road work, so it's a bit noisy, so it is not that quiet tonight. But I think they stopped. They may actually be watching this. <laughs> Who knows? But usually, this is the time or this is the moment when I can um, you know, come, um, come and then I can um, enjoy some of you know, silence if necessary. But that is me. Um, that was um, my teaching. Um, this is messy. That is the message that I shared um, with our um, you know, the children. Um, there's another reason why I decided to come um, to this spot actually for the um for the um for tonight's you know thought for the night <laughs> because there is a, something that i really wanted to show well that's not the collection because you already have seen you have seen that collection how it looked like if you haven't seen um and then um that <laughs> jay you never know yeah who knows the good christians out there watching the because the thought for night <laughs> who knows <laughs> but anyway the collection is not something that i wanted to show you tonight rather there is a something that i wanted to show you and, and that's why i've come here um before i show you what i wanted to show you i'd like to ask you to see this you know See, see this altar, an altar rail. We have altar rail, and in our church, especially the choir stalls, there, and then also the. Um, um, can you see this the screen there? That's a um, pipe organ screen. It's all brown, the dark brown. Good evening, Madeline. Welcome. It's it's all dark brown, but in the church. Well, that screen actually used to be a much, much lighter color, and I didn't like it because if you sit down there in the church, and then you will end up seeing, spotting one, two, three, four different types of color here. So I didn't like it um, at all. So I asked, um, you know, um, the church warden, and we had a conversation about how we're going to make our church, especially the altar side, unified. I think that is quite, you know, important. And then, as you know, we don't have that many ornamental, you know, you know, displays here in this church. It's rather kind of simple. We are big, we are quite large church, but we don't have um, a beautiful reredos or anything. We have some items, but our church is not heavily decorative church at all. We are quite simple. Not like our, um, let's say, our neighboring parish, you know, for those who have been to um, the St. Peter and Paul's Church, so if you haven't been there, um, I, I would recommend you to visit their you know, the, you know, Facebook you know, the page and then just, just watch one of their, their live streamings. You will be able to see um, at the back, they have a beautiful row of those. It's quite big, really big, about that size, about the size of our row of those, but that is different level. It's beautiful, but we don't have such you know wonderful items there so i quite envy them <laughs> but this is what we have but within our ability i believe we have to make sure that we make our church look best within our you know the limits we don't need to actually spend huge amount of money to buy the same style of erodos because that's not what we want so we have been working hard to make some changes so that we, well, the altar, you know, this side of the church may look better. So the screen that I showed you is the first step. So now, as you can see, brown, brown. It looks a bit darker, actually, but with this camera, with my mobile phone camera, it looks a bit brighter. But if you see them from, the, from your seat, that will look much, much darker than this this color now so we have fairly unified um you know color until um until from there up to there but do you remember <laughs> organ our pipe organ <laughs> we have pipe organ which is working and in working condition it is good i'm, I'm I, I quite like this you know organ it's okay and then this organ particularly um, has been maintained by so many people. Um, for example, you know, um, the Norman Pickworth um, 
Um, he died um, you know, several years ago, for example, in a Norman Pickwick and others. Uh, he was the one who was looking after this organ. Um, you know, Peter Tongue and etc. You know the names better than me. So um, there are lots of people who are looking after this organ mechanically, but outside the organ box, the colour was a bit, how can I put it there? The kind of like a curry, curry colour. Yes, of course, you know, um, you know, Carol, we miss the organ, organ sound. But it is working, and I have to say, it is working. Um, who knows, we, will have, um, uh, we may have to have um, organ sound back. But anyway, the colour was brown here, and then the organ box itself was curry colour, completely mismatched. So, <laughs> so that has been on my to-do list for a long, long, long time. But finally, and then this is the reason why I decided to begin from there. I cannot show you. I have to keep it secret. Are you ready to see how it looked like? Oh! <laughs> ta <-da! laughs> Don't surprise. Now, it looks like, um, um, you know, um, it, it's grey. Yes, it is grey now. But that's not the colour that we've, we picked, <laughs> as you can imagine. Or oh, do I enthusiast, uh, if you are, you know, enthusiastic, um, enthusiastic about, you know, DIY, if you are sort of in a handyman or handy girls, um, and that is first court. Dave Jenner came with his son, you know, Matthew, this afternoon and spent some time, and then they just finished there. And uh, we are going to try to paint it brown dark brown so that we can have the matching colour from this organ set all the way back to that area. The whole church, the whole church here, if you sit at the back, you're going to see this church now has a unified colour. Of course, there are some items, something like this. This is where we keep our frontal and superfrontal. Do you know what the frontal and superfrontal means? If you see the altar, sometimes you see there is a big drop, depending on the season. Now is the time of season is green, so we should have a bit of green, um, you know, drop, and then that is what we call the frontal. And if you see that part, there is a top bit, there is a kind of skirt um, running, and then that is a superfrontal. So we keep them in this box, but not that's the darkest spot, spot this one. That's a speaker. We keep them here in this box, but I'm sure that we're going to actually make it a bit darker than it looks. So that is um, the reason why I decided to come here and then do the thoughts for the night tonight, so that I can tell you, I can show you what's happening in the church. Everybody's saying that, okay, the lockdown, the Father's having you must be um, you know, quite busy. Um, yes, in a way. <laughs> Yes, I'm, 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 sometimes I feel I'm, I'm busier than usual, yeah, because we have to deal with new situation. It's not only me, all the vicars in the world are probably doing exactly the same thing, and I know you are also doing the same thing. But physically, um, sometimes I've got some more time, but I, spend, I tend to spend more time in doing online stuff, something like this. <laughs> but even if we are busy, and even if we are under the certain rules and regulations and <laughs> thank you Kathy your church is so lovely and peaceful looking oh, we, 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 we're trying to do our best but anyway whatever the situation what's going on out there still we are doing something inside the church and I wanted to, um, to tell you how I, I feel grateful for, um, for your support not only coming to the church and doing some work like this, but also for those um, you know, who, who, who are remembering our church and for those who are praying with us, praying for us, and, and that is all um, count, I believe. And for those who would like to actually be a bit more active, you know, Saturday 17th of October, <laughs> that's a church cleaning day. <laughs> so please, please come. And um, if I can make it, if I cannot make it, probably I'll set my goal of cleaning and uh, probably I'll do it 
on the Friday evening or Friday afternoon. But on um, the Saturday night, it is the, um, the time that we all get together. So, wearing your mask, it's not because of the dirt or dust, but for your safety, wearing the mask and then come and help us. A couple, well, a couple of things that I prepared um, to say to you is one of them is this. I'm sorry, because it, I don't have any color printer in, in, in my you know, record, so um, I just printed it out as a black and white. But um, I may be able to share this one on our church um, Facebook church page as well, because I uploaded, I shared this one um, in my personal you know, Facebook. But this is um, from the Diocese of Oxford, because everybody knows that now is a magic number, not the seven, lucky number, magic number six. Yeah? So, living well through the next six months. <laughs> Living with COVID-19 will be hard for everyone, blah, 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 blah. So the Diocese of Oxford came out with this good idea, beautiful idea, I think, and then they're suggesting sick things. Yeah. So I'm going to give you this, you know, the sick things. First one, six months is the new horizon. I think this is to encourage people to not to actually feel, oh, six months, you know. No, no, you don't need to see it that way. Six months is actually the new horizon. Let's have a positive mindset. I think this is an important thing. And the six days to work, yes, working hard, and a Sabbath to rest. The importance of we still need to have that pattern. We work hard six days, and then one day we have a break. But that break, it is not just you having a physical break. Rather, it is a Sabbath day, the day that you need to recharge your souls and spirits with the Lord. So that is an interesting thing, important thing, I think. And the six people to journey with. You know, we, we say lockdown, and we're only allowed to meet a certain number of people within our bubbles or supporting network. Okay, well, that's not just your friends. They are your companion on your life's journey. So let's see our lives as if it's a pilgrimage. I think this is a good attitude. And the sixth way to be salt and light. And then it says, identify the people and community organizations you can support. Yeah, don't forget St. George's. <laughs> one, of the, one of them, <laughs> so you may find another, you know, the five organizations so that we can carry on supporting others. And 6% to your church. I think it's very interesting. And then that's the realistic goal. If your income is stable, if your income is stable, and increase your giving to sustain the local church. I think that's good because there's some people actually, I know many of you are doing um, the tithe, which is you know, giving on a 10% of your income. I know many of you are doing that. I um, also do that. So thank you very much for your generosity. But if you haven't been in that way, why don't you try to, if your income is stable, and it suggests that um, increase your giving to the 6% um, to your church. And I think that is a very you know, generous you know, um, an idea. And also the last thing, six people to pray for. As I briefly said, that is encourage people to actually see our life as a pilgrimage. So in our pilgrimage, we need to think about other people whom we can actually pray for. And find the six people. Find the six of them. One, or five, or four. Oh, no, 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 six, six. <laughs> Find the six people and then get their names. Take their names down and then seriously, you just pray for them. It doesn't need to be the Christians if there is non-Christian people, but you think, okay, what if that person, my friends, you know, George or John or Sandra or whoever, what if she or he becomes Christian? That would be wonderful. In that case... Put their names down, and then for the next six months, we pray for them. I think that these are the great suggestions, and I'd like to encourage, well, I'd like to actually love, I'd love to actually use some of them as our own campaign in St. George's. The first one is going to be, well, working hard six days, and then you know, um, one Sabbath day, probably, but the second, um, possibly, if it's not the first, I'm going to probably pick um, the last one. Take six names whom you'd like to pray for. 
So tonight, um, I'm going to suggest to you, don't go, well, well, you don't need to actually put your pen and papers now and write it down, beginning to write down the names. You don't need to do that. Think about it. Ask the Lord, ask Jesus to give you those six names. He may tell you something in spirit. So I'm going to encourage you to find the six people whom you would like to pray for. Okay, that is going to be, that's not difficult, easy. If you can actually write it down now, you can do it, but leave it until tomorrow morning. Okay, well, have a lovely dream, and then they may actually come, come, come up to your, um, your dream and then may say, oh, let's say, um, Mustafa, I want you to pray for me. <laughs> and uh, if you have any sort of extra two lines or something, please don't forget to add the name of your priests as well, myself and Father Vince, or your own local church vicars, who knows, or someone whom you knew from your previous you know, church. So don't forget to add you know, my name, that would be wonderful. It's not compulsory though, okay? Now, do my friends, um, it's a time for me to um, say... Um, say the prayer. Oh, by the way, in order for me to um, enjoy the silence, in order for me to enjoy the silence, I decided not to use my guitar. Well, it's not my guitar. It actually belongs to um, the Ron Beckwith. I borrowed it. But instead, um, me um, using um, that guitar and a sing-along, I'm going to just use my own voice. Well, I hope um, you don't mind. Um, I don't have, I haven't actually brought my microphone, so the sound quality today is not that good. I know that, but I'm going to move to, well, I told you, they're going to be collected. <laughs> So I'm going to show you this statue. I'm going to light a candle now. Oh. Can you see? I know it's, it's extremely dark. Oh, maybe better. That's okay. And I'm going to sing a song um, with you. And, and this is an easy one, so you can actually sing, um, sing with me. Um, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He is so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He is so good to me. So I'm going to sing um, this song um, with you tonight. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He is so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He is so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He so good to me. I love him so. I love
of him so I love him so he is so good to me I love him so I love him so I love him so he's so good to me let us pray O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works to proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all for evermore. Amen. It looks better now. <laughs> that was extremely dark, much darker than I uh, expected. Um, but anyway, um, the thank you everyone um, for joining me tonight on Monday night um, for our thoughts for the night. It has been a busy, um, a busy, um, a bit busy day, um, and I hope all of you have um, a peaceful um, and wonderful, um, you know, night's sleep. Um, have a good night's sleep and have a wonderful dream if you're dreaming of something. And then please don't forget to pick the six names, the six people whom you need to pray for. May God bless you all and I may see you again on Wednesday at Mass. Bye for now. Good night. <laughs>